All right, now we're moving on to Unit 10, Section 4, which is all about pyramids. Probably the most work required out of any of these three-dimensional shapes that we will talk about here in Unit 10. Um, so this is actually going to be a two-day lesson, one video, though. So the first thing here is, is um, the definition of a pyramid. It's just a polygon base. Um, so any, like, triangle, square, pentagon, hexagon non um, you know, those shapes that we talked about in Unit 9, that's the base, and then it has triangular lateral sides that meet the, at a common vertex. So you can see below here some examples. So this would be a square base, it looks like. This would be a triangular base. Um, this would be a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so a hexagonal base. Um... Um, and then you can see here that they meet up top at this common point. All the sides are triangular. It doesn't matter how many sides the, the base has. You, they all are triangular sides and meet at a common point. Um, and we always name it after its base. So we have a triangular pyramid, a square pyramid, a rectangular pyramid, a pentagonal pyramid, hexagonal pyramid, and so on. So whatever the base is, that's how you'd name it. Okay, so in, in the next slide here, we're going to talk about... Um, how to find the surface area. And that's what the first part of this video will be. The second part will be the volume. Like I said, it's a two-day thing because it does require a little bit of work. Um, but before we even get there, we need to talk about the slant height versus the uh, just regular vertical height. So the slant height is if you look at one of these triangular um, faces here. So right here, for example, the slant height is the distance from the middle of that to your vertex. So you're kind of forming a right triangle or two right triangles on one of the faces versus the regular height comes down from the vertex right to the middle of my base. So the slant height is on the face. The um, regular height or the vertical height is, is right from the top of your pyramid to the middle of your base. No matter what the shape is, that's your regular height. And we're going to use slant height here in just a little bit, so that's why I need to make sure we understand the difference between height and slant height. A lot of right triangles involved here and um, area of regular shapes, again, which we spent you know, a few days on in the last, the last um, unit. So the surface area of a pyramid, again, this is um, how much material it would take to make up this pyramid, pyramid on the outside. Um, so this is a combination of all the face, the areas of all the faces. So how do you find it? Well, you take B, your base area, plus one half P, the perimeter of your base, times L. Now this is new. This isn't um, this isn't the regular height. So in this pyramid right here, here is my regular height from the vertex straight down to the middle of my base. My slant height is here on the face of my triangle. And the reason I bring that up is because usually we're gonna end up having to do some sort of right triangle trig, or um, if we get really complicated, or just the Pythagorean theorem, um, because we're gonna need to find the slant height. So we use L rather than H. H would be the regular height, which would be six in this example. Slant height is here, which we are not given. So we'll talk about how to find that. So the first thing, let's just see if we can find all of our missing information. So I need B, my base area. So we're looking at just the bottom part of this pyramid. So if you look at the bottom, it tells you the both sides are 10, which means the base of my pyramid is a square. So to find the base area, I'm going to take, um, let's change my color here. I'm going to take 10 times 10, um, length times width, or because it's a square, we just say side times side or side square because they're all the same. It doesn't matter. But my base area is 100. So I have B. Okay, my perimeter, P, is, is just, again, of the base. And because it's a square, it's just 10 all the way around. So 10 plus 10 plus 10 up here plus 10 over here would be a total of 40. So my perimeter is 40, so I have base area, I have my perimeter, one half is just a number, so now I just need L, my slant height. So again, that is on one of the faces, it just happens to be on the right face here, you can draw it on any of those faces. 
Um, but what you see here is they've done us the courtesy of drawing this right triangle. Okay, so you're going to have to get a little visual here to see the triangle and to understand the side. So they tell us, let me put this off to the side. Here's what they tell us. There's that triangle. This is L, my slant height that I'm looking for. All I did was just take this and draw it over here. Okay, so they tell us that side is 6. We know this side here because this whole side of my base is 10. Um, and the regular height, that 6, comes down to the exact middle of our base. So it's just going to cut that 10 in half and make it 5. And so we just have L, our slant height, left to find. So like I said, if we want to get real crazy, we could use right triangle trig. So sine, cosine, or tangent. But in this example, if you know two sides of a right triangle, you can just go ahead and use the Pythagorean theorem. So A and B are the sides, the legs. C is always your hypotenuse. So A, well, I'm just going to call A 6. B will be 5. And then C will be L, my slant height. Um, so 6 squared is 36 plus 25 equals L squared. Um, 36 plus 25 is 61. And then if you want to find the square root of 61, you can just type that into a calculator. We can use decimals at this point, but it'd be about um, 7.81, we'll call it. So now I have everything that I need. So I can just plug them into the formula and away I go. But you can see how this can take a little bit more work. If your base is something besides a square, rectangle, or a triangle, um, if it's a pentagon, for example, um, now we have a lot more things involved. And these can get very complicated very quickly. But in this example, it wasn't too bad. So to find my surface area, I'm just going to take my base area, which was 100 plus one half times my base perimeter times my slant height, which is 7.81. Um, if you type that into your calculator, you get, well, let's simplify a little bit. You get about 156.20, um, and then add 100 to that. So we get about 256.20, and I don't know the units, let's just call it units squared so there we go the um, surface area of a pyramid so let's try uh one more and then we'll talk about volume here um so the surface area of this pyramid we need to find the base area then we need to find the base perimeter and our slant height so uh, let's start with b my base area so what we have here is a nice right triangle, um, base perimeter and slant height. Um, let's, let's actually fill in what we know so far. I, um, looking at this diagram again, here is your slant height. It's along the face, not down to the middle of our triangle there. Um, so my slant height's 11, so we don't have to do any work for that. Um, base is an equal lateral triangle. I don't know if you saw this little key down here. So we can find the perimeter quite easily by, um, it doesn't look like an equilateral triangle, by the way, but that just means that all sides are 13. Um, so the perimeter of this thing would be 13 plus 13 plus 13 or 39. Um, and then the last thing we need to do is find our base area. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw that equilateral triangle. So here's my base if I'm looking at it from the top down. Draw my equilateral triangle. I know all sides are 13. Um, so a couple of things here. The first one I'll bring up is, is we probably have to use right triangles at some point. Or I at least need to draw this because the area of a triangle is one half base times height. Uh, my base is 13. That's easy, but I don't know my height. Um, so we can use a right triangle and then cut our base in half. So this would be 6.5 from there to there. And then use the Pythagorean theorem. Or you could use trig because in an in a equilateral triangle, all the angles are 60 degrees here. So this would be 30 up here. And then we have a special right triangle. 
Um, it's up to you. If you want to stick to one method, the Pythagorean theorem would probably be the best. You just have to cut your base in half um, to find our height. So let's do that. So um, I'm going to call a squared. I'm just going to call that h plus 6.5 squared equals 13 squared. So now we just need to square each of these. So we have h squared plus 42.25 equals 169. Um, 169 minus 42.25 is 126.75. And then just take the square root of that. And again, you're going to have decimals, but that's fine. So the height of this triangle is 11.26 centimeters so that's not even the area all that work was just to find uh, this right here because the area of a triangle is one half the base times the height so i need to find um, i need to find my height just to find my base area so you can see how there's going to be a lot of work here so it's going to be a challenge to stay organized but hopefully we can do that so I'm going to jump off to the side over here. The area of just the base is going to be one half times my base was 13 times the height we just found was 11.26. So if we multiply that, um, 13 times 0.5 or divided by 2, however you want to do it. So the area of my base is 73.18 if you round up. So 73.18 centimeters. Um, and depending on when and how you've rounded so far, you might be off a little bit, but it should be right around 73. So now finally, we can find the surface area of this triangular pyramid. So surface area is going to equal my base area, 73.18, plus one half times my perimeter times the uh, um, slant height, which we were given, is 11. So 73.18 plus, so if I take 39 times 11 um, divided by 2, I get 214.5. If I add to that 73.18, we end up with a total surface area of 287.68 centimeters squared so again um, depending on where you rounded you might have something just a little bit different but that's okay um, we should be right around 287 you know within about one so you could be down at 286 or up to 288 we should be right around there um, so this is day two um, this is strictly on volume so like I said one problem can be a little bit of work depending on the information you're given um, but we still need to know some similar things here. So for volume, the, the equation is one-third my base area times my height. Now, this is not the slant height. I don't need this anymore. That's not necessary for volume. It is for surface area. Um, so we still need to find our base area. And again, if it's a square, a triangle, or a rectangle, pretty straightforward. One-half the base times the height, or base length times width, or side times side. Um, but when we get to like pentagonal pyramids or hexagonal pyramids, you got to find the area of a regular figure, which requires some more work. Um, but my base area, since it's a square, I can just take 10 times 10 and I get 100 um, units. I don't know what the units are. And then my height H is from the vertex straight down, which they give us is 6. So I have everything I know or I need to know. I just need to plug it in. So volume is equal to one third times 100 times 6. So you type that into your calculator, and you should end up with exactly, um, there we go, 200 units squared, you know, centimeters squared, inches squared. We don't know. So we'll just say units squared. So again, when you find a volume, pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. So let's try this one. So now we have a rectangular pyramid, um, and we want to find the volume. So we need B, our base area, and we need H, our vertical height. So they were nice enough to label the vertical height here, um, and it's going to involve some right triangle, tr uh, not trig, but probably the Pythagorean theorem. 
So let's start with the base area first of all. So it's a rectangle, so all you need to do is take 17 times 32, and you have your base area length times width. Um, 17 times 32 is 544 feet squared. So there's my base area. Um, and now I need my height. So again, you're going to have to try to visualize these. What I'm going to do is draw a nice right triangle here. And I'll even put it off to the side. Okay, so there's that triangle. They tell me the hypotenuse is 28.8. Eight, four. That's my slant height. Um, I know that my entire base here is 32, but the vertical height cuts that in half. So the base of this triangle is actually only 16. And again, you can use the Pythagorean theorem to find H there. And then we have our height. We can find the volume. So we'll set this up. We'll go 16 squared plus H squared equals um, 28.84 squared. So 16 squared is 256, and then 28.84 times 28.84, 28 28 28.84 squared is 831.75, and I rounded a little bit there. Subtract 256 from that, so we have h squared equals 575.75. And then if you take the square root of that, um, these numbers are getting kind of gross, but my height, um, not h squared, but h, if I take the square root of that, um, my height should be about 23.99. And again, if you round it a little bit differently, um, you might come out with something slightly different, but it should be pretty close to 30. So my height is 23.99. I can now find the volume. So volume equals um, one third times 544 times 23.99. So 0. 0.5 times um, 544 times 23.99 is approximately 6,525.28. Feet cubed. I think I labeled the other one incorrectly. Should be units cubed. We're talking volume, so we want cubic units. Area is square units. Um, and that takes care of both days of section 10.4, surface area and volume of a pyramid.